hot, deep breath. <laughs> Here's to the, uh, to the African campaign, to our friend Rommel. If he runs out of bullets, he can uh, throw sand in their eyes. Huh? Oh, oh, now I suppose you expect me to make some comment about Rommel's campaign and his failure of supplies. Huh? <laughs> oh, but your technique is obvious. It amazes me you survived so long. Uh. I, uh, I see a little left in there. <laughs> you expect to get me drunk, eh? Yeah? Then pump me for information. <laughs> hey, do it. Are you using this as an excuse to, uh, to hedge on your bet? No, no, I shall drink you under this table, March. And someday, you can believe this, March. I will get the evidence on you, and I will see you shot. <laughs> well, here's to that day. at the Gestapo, drain the watchdogs. The blind, I, am a politician at the Reich Ministry. I can see you for what you really are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I like you, Schumann. You know me so well. With you, I don't have to pretend. Uh, I like you too much. I, like, I really do. You're the only man in Berlin I can talk to. That is why, you see, why, when I kill you, I shall be very lonely. I shall be very sad. <laughs> I will, too. So, until then, I mean, drink! <laughs> <laughs> sure you understand what I'm going to tell you. We have a mutual friend, I.W. Vorchek. I don't believe I recall that name. I have come a long way. I have no time for subtleties. 
I'm an agent of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. Vorchek has given me a full report on your activities. There's no use to deny that you are blue light. What do you want? Let me breathe. Anything you know ends here. Let me breathe. I did not come alone. My fellow operative has a full dossier on you, which we are ready to turn over to the Gestapo. If I am killed, you will die soon after. We do not want you dead. You'd be of no use to us that way. I've come to offer you a very attractive proposition. Comrade March. <laughs> have been trying to plant a man inside the German High Command. But you will do instead. From now on, March, you are working for us. Or else you expose me to the Gestapo. Huh? It would be painful for us. But you know, we wouldn't hesitate to do it if you make it necessary. It's up to you. From now on, all information, documents, photographs, reconnaissance data that you may come upon be turned over to me, to no one else. Do you think I'd betray my country to save my own life? Do you think I could be blackmailed into selling out that easily? Look at it this way. We are both fighting the Nazis, so what you're doing is not uh, totally wrong. Merely expedient. <laughs> are you speaking for the Soviet government, or uh, is this on your own? Whether or not I am uh, working for my government or for myself is of no consequence. That I hold your life in my hands is a consequence that should concern you. After all, who's worse? Us or these Nazis? I really don't see much difference. March! March, I am there. On the march. If you will be good enough to take me to my hotel. I'm not feeling too well. I'm feeling rather sick myself. Sure. The plans for the nuclear detonator will be in Schumann's office at the Ministry tomorrow at 11. You will have the papers for less than one hour. It's urgent that you... Anything wrong? No, don't worry about it. I'll handle it myself. David... Don't try to contact me. If I need you, I'll call. <laughs> at the beer hall last night. He was the gentleman who was so interested in the state of your health. Won't you get in? Your people don't intend to let me stray very far, do they? No, not at all. The business, Herr Marsch. The Reich Ministry has been asked to approve large sums for the building of a detonator for a nuclear fission device. I see we've been getting the same kind of information. Your drinking partner at the beer hall last night. We believe he has a key to a safe that uh, contains documents on this detonator. I believe that you now have such a key. I promise you, the Americans will not know that you supplied information to us. Yeah, 
Well, forget it. Send your information to the SS. I'll take my chances. Do you recognize that young lady? No. No? Then why did you have a secret rendezvous with her just a few minutes ago? You see, Herr Marsh, we have suspected for some time that Mademoiselle Duchard was your contact with blue light. Do you wish to gamble with her life as well as with your own? She is safe only so long as you are safe. Now, tomorrow, you will steal the documents and deliver them to us. There will be no further deviation from orders. Do you understand? until you leave the ministry. And when do I hand over everything? Proceed to the bear hall very first night. We will follow. David Marsh, is he right? Minister Cochran, I have an appointment. Here are the specifications for the detonator. Herr Schumann, you don't look well. Is there anything the matter? No, no, just a headache. I didn't sleep too well. I had to work late last night. These are the only copies. I'm instructed to give you one hour to look them over. If you have any questions, I will be down the hall. When you telephoned me this morning, you said you had some information relating to one of the members of my staff. Yes, this is very embarrassing, but last night, your old man Schumann and I went out drinking. I'm very well aware of Schumann's weakness for alcohol. If that is all... Schumann became intoxicated and later began voicing his sympathies for the poor Russians. And then I saw him in the company of two suspected Soviet agents. Where did this take place? The beer hall, Konigstrasse. I suggest you have it watched. It may be their meeting place. At this very moment, Schumann has in his possession top secret documents pertaining to... Well... I may be mistaken, but I thought perhaps you would like to know before the Gestapo was called in. Schumann? Schumann, report to my office at once. Oh, but Herr Kautner, I'm in the process of evaluating this material. That can wait. Secure the documents or report here immediately. I appreciate your coming to me first. I could get into trouble with the SS for not going through the proper channels, so uh, we'll keep this off the record. Hmm? Come in. You needed me, Herr Kautner. This will take a few minutes. Sit down. Exit. 
He cares too much about the girl. We are in great danger here. He takes too long. Don't worry, Dimitri. You will get your papers and your promotion. Uh, thank you very much. But I have never expressed any sympathy for the Russians, not once. I would very much like to believe you. Oh, hey, Kaldner, could we not continue this some other time? I have some very urgent business to complete. Schumann, what is taking you so long? I told you I just had to have those papers. I haven't finished with them yet. I need more time. Where are the papers? What are you doing with that camera? I ask you what you are doing with that camera! I don't know where the papers are. The camera was in my safe. Why would someone else photograph the papers, leave the film in the camera, and the camera inside your safe? How much did you sell out for? I just, I just, I just, I just, I just. If you have one ounce of loyalty left in you, you will not disgrace the Reich's ministry. No, you mustn't. You, you must not believe that. Kavna, Kavna, my old friend. You cannot believe that I would do such a thing. Kavna! We will take two units to the beer hall under Kennex Tower, sir. Come in here to get it, do you? Where are the papers? Good. Well, Comrade March, you will hear again from us soon. Only the next time we meet, I will probably be director of all Soviet espionage activities here in Germany.
Aren't you going to check those papers to see that they're authentic? You wouldn't dare play games with us. You know the consequence for yourself and for Mr. Shard. Besides, I trust you. service. I didn't know if you'd believe me, so I, I came here myself. I was just in time. What is it, huh? Your own man. Inspired. Your own man. Yeah. Our own man. Schumann. We know, and he has been taken care of. pick up his accomplice. A woman about 30, blonde hair. No, we saw no woman. But we have the papers back. She can do us no harm, can't she? headquarters. The marshal told you everything. He told me nothing, but I knew he was in trouble. I've been watching you since yesterday. Then you know. He turned Koslov into the Nazis and they killed him. We meant very much to each other. We worked together for four years. We risked our lives together. Now your march has killed him. So now you're going to turn march over to the SS. I can't let you. Don't let yourself begin to fall in love. Don't let yourself begin to feel too much. Thank you. 